Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Build a House. Let's Build a Reptile House is coming very close to an end in today's episode as we are finally going to finish the whole inside of our building. So this means there's only one final episode to go which is coming out next Monday where we are going and trying to create a beautiful outside to our building with some planters, some decoration on the outside of the building and stuff like that and also opening the reptile house to the public so that we can finally have some visitors in here and alongside that we are going to yeah put it in the workshop for you guys to play with it and have a little fun with it for yourself so i'm going to upload the whole building as a habitat so that you can use it for your own zoos and also I'm going to upload it as a zoo so that you can have a walk around in it um, in the manner that I built the whole thing but before we do that we have to finish some stuff on the inside so in today's episode we are going to build the last and final habitat on the inner circle of the building so uh, the main habitats I should say um, in the last episode we built a beautiful habitat for the caimans in uh, the center of our building and today we are going to build the twin habitat which is going to be for the huge saltwater crocodiles um, yeah it's going to be uh, it's going to be big enough for uh, the salties uh, we're going to have three of them in there once the whole building is finished or once the habitat is finished. It's going to look a little bit similar to the one uh, for the Caymans. Yes, of course, because it's uh, just like a twin habitat. So uh, I did copy those round windows uh, around there as well so that we are going to have them on the other side as well. And then we are trying and creating the inside of this habitat. As I said, it's going to be a little bit similar to the habitat for the Caymans, um, still a little bit different, but I try to cut out all the stuff that it's not that interesting that you already have seen in last week's episode so uh, yeah you're not going to see how I do all the round shaped windows just one time so that you can see how to do that for yourself so it's pretty easy with those concrete pieces um, just use the smaller ones that you can turn around and put in uh, in uh, the little gaps between the straight concrete pieces so that you can fill up those holes and everything looks nice and beautiful. Uh, those round windows is something that I think I might use quite more often in the future. Maybe for the next installment on uh, this series, uh, which I told you already in the last episode, that we are going to build a nocturnal house for, uh, yeah, lots of nocturnal animals. Um, you can also let me know in the comment section down below right now which animals you guys want to see in the nocturnal house. So thinking about that we have quite some of them in the game like uh, the aardvark, the fennec fox uh, is definitely a nocturnal animal as well, um, the pangolin, <coughs> the raccoon, I also think, yes, definitely the European badger is a nocturnal animal. Uh, what else do we have that is nocturnal? The badger, the raccoon, the fennec, the aardvark, the pangolin. There might be some more and maybe 
maybe the sand cat as well? Not quite sure about that, but it would be pretty cool if we actually would have a cat in there as well. Oh, and the armadillo definitely is nocturnal as well. And forgot about that, the wombat. The wombat is nocturnal and normally the quokkas are as well nocturnal. Yeah, there's quite a lot of animals that we can put in the nocturnal house. So, uh, as I said, just let me know in the comment section which animal you definitely want to see uh, in our nocturnal house. And uh, I will be happy to build for those animals. I'm looking very much forward to those, uh, yet yeah, to the next installment. Because, as I said, the nocturnal house is going to be a little bit more versatile because we do have so much different animals which have different needs and different habitats and not as similar as all the reptiles that we do have in here. Yes, of course, uh, there's also some versatility in here as well uh, when we think about uh, the monitors, the tortoises and uh, our crocodilians, but yeah, small mammals or nocturnal animals. It's going to be a little bit more different. And I'm also thinking about if we should have outdoor habitats for the next one as well. So that it's going to be a little bit uh, yeah, bigger than this house. I don't know right now, but uh, yeah, I'm thinking. I'm in the process. <laughs> okay, um, yeah, and as this is coming to an end, uh, there's also a new start for the next DLC Sue series here on my channel um, on Wednesday that you definitely should not miss. Um, it's going to be for the Aquatic DLC, and the park is going to be called Haivan Berenang which means swimming animals in Malaysia. I think it was Malaysian. Um, this beautiful name came up by Sonia Lalalu. Uh, she thought about that and I thought this is a pretty nice name and uh, we're going to call the park that, uh, that name. Uh, there's going to be a massive and very, very modern entrance built which I'm very excited for you guys to see that. Uh, so I hope you guys will tune in on Wednesday when this new chapter for the DLC Zeus will air. Um, that's also going on a lot this week once again. So uh, the co-op project Bahati Park is finished. So there's not going to be a new episode this Friday, but there's going to be a new classroom episode on my channel this Friday. Uh, unfortunately, or fortunately, depends on which language you, uh, you're speaking, it's going to be in German language and we are going to focus on the theme of overpasses. So there's going to be some examples of different overpasses that you can build for your animals. So. Uh, free to be um, yeah to to be exact uh, there's going to be three options that I'm going to show you how to build them and what you have to take care of and um, yeah definitely tune in on Friday and on Saturday the next real life zoo tour will air on my channel as well. Um, this time I visited the safari park Beekse Bergen. Um, you definitely should uh, tune in into this one because this zoo or safari park is amazing. It's the park with the biggest habitats that I have seen for yeah forever. Um, there's so many really, really huge habitats for the animals that you um, sometimes have quite a hard time to find the animals. Uh, they have at least 
two or three massive habitats for African elephants. Um, the habitats are this big that they actually could manage to um, yeah, to have them share their habitats with some antelopes and uh, yeah, just have a look for yourself. It's, it's just amazing. Yeah, and that's what's going to happen this week on my channel. So lots of stuff is going on. Um, I'm planning to release those um, classroom videos more often right now on my channel because I always told you guys that I wanted to do something like that and had so many ideas and you guys were always so excited about that and then I didn't come up with some videos so I guess it is finally time to do so. Okay but let's get back into our reptile house where we are uh, yeah, ready for the plants in there. I wanted to have some big plants in here uh, because in the center part it's the, it's also the highest part of the building that we do have here so we actually can put in some huge trees palms uh, whatever so i wanted to have some of them at least in here And I think in the end the habitat looks quite nicely. Um, you could also see me putting down uh, some uh, like a sun bench for uh, the animals right next to the bridge. Um, I was thinking about having some kind of a planter in here as well like we had for the uh, caimans but I thought no this might make the whole thing a little bit too dark in here too much shadows and so I decided we're going to have some kind of a sunbank where the crocodiles can come up to and lay down a little bit for a rest so that they would be pretty close to our visitors. So I uh, decided this was a nice idea or a nice addition that we don't have in there already. But something a little bit similar to the one that we have for the Komodo dragons. some final touches here on the panoramic window for the animals <clears throat> um, and I'm also going to go back into the stuff area uh, the backstage area here as well uh, you guys came up with some nice ideas what I should have added uh, as well to make it not look that boring so I took some of your ideas and tried to make it work I hope you guys will like it and tell me at the end of the video in the comment section what you think about it. Uh, if there's anything that I still should add in there or take care about in our next build for the nocturnal house, I already do have an idea what we can do in the nocturnal house for the backstage areas. So I want something like an open feeding kitchen or something like that where the visitors can actually walk through the house and um, in the center of it or at some part of the house you have a huge window where you can have a look inside where the food for all the animals that do live in there is prepared so um, yeah that that seems to be a nice idea which i'm going to uh, to build definitely in the next building and maybe some other different things so um, yeah, building the reptile house also reminded me about the stuff that I didn't take care about as much as I should have done. So um, right from the beginning I wanted to go into realism, uh, not too hard, but uh, as hard as I could to make it look nice and realistic but I haven't thought about all the technical stuff in here so maybe I'm going to focus a little bit more on the backstage areas in the next one um, to make it even a little bit more realistic so um, yeah I figured out in reptile houses you might not have too much of backstage areas in there where you could actually separate animals or where the animals can uh, go to 
when they didn't want to be uh, right close to the visitors, where they could hide a little bit. That is something that you usually don't have for reptile houses, but that is something that I definitely have to take care about in the nocturnal house so that our animals would be able to disappear from the views of our viewers. So I'm going to take care of this, uh, definitely. <clears throat> So right at this part of the video I'm taking care about some stuff that I forgot about. So those stickers on the doors that your visitors can't walk through that. Uh, putting down some trash bins which makes total sense and uh, which we definitely need. Uh, because if we are going to open the house to the public in the next episode we need trash bins or this house would be a mess. I hope everything is going to work once we're opening it. Um, yeah, keep your fingers crossed. We will see it in the next episode. I might put down some of the guest barriers as well so that our guests won't walk through the uh, planters. You will see that at the end of the video. Um, Yeah, we, uh, we will have some problems with some of our staff members walking through the planters. So we definitely want, uh, don't want to have that with our guests as well. So yeah, we have to think about that. So here I was choosing the tiles that we are going to put on the walls to make it look a little bit better. And I think it looks pretty nice in the end. Yeah, also the color scheme is pretty nice. Not too busy with uh, the brown, black and white tones. And then we are going to build some uh, yeah, and now I forgot the word. You know me guys, I have to google it quick. Some cabinets. Yeah. Some cabinets, that is something that you guys told me about in last... No, not in the last episode, but... Uh, two weeks before, I think it was. Yeah, so I made something pretty quick, pretty simple. Um, those pieces here make perfect... Um, <laughs> yeah, make perfect what? Oh my god. Guys, I'm so sorry that I have to Google every single word today. Make some pretty nice handles for uh, our ca caskets just forgot about it once again damn it some handles for the cabinets oh my god what was a casket Oh my god, a casket is the same thing as a coffin. No, <laughs> I didn't build caskets or coffins in here. That is something that we don't do. Um, <laughs> maybe in my DLC seri uh, series when we are going to build a zoo for the Twilight Pack, maybe then we are going to build coffins, but uh, not now. <laughs> oh my god, I'm sorry. Okay, so... Um, uh, trying to put down some decoration which was not that easy because I wanted to keep it classy and uh, not too busy so I was trying to put down those Indian wallpapers here um, many of them are going to be deleted later on because uh, yeah it's it's just too much and it doesn't make sense to have a wallpaper with an elephant or with a peacock in there uh, if we do not have those animals in the building. 
so I deleted it, used some of these animal stickers for the animals we do have here in the reptile house. Uh, unfortunately, we don't have those animal stickers for many of them. Uh, as I told you guys often in the past series uh, or the past few episodes and also in my German series that um, I would love to have those animal stickers for all the animals that we do have in the game but unfortunately that's not the case um, which is a little bit disappointing to be completely honest and um, you never know what's going to happen with the last DLC for Planet Zoo that we might be getting uh, pretty soon because I assume that it would make sense to get those uh, get that DLC before Planet Coaster 2 will be released, but you never know. Yeah, some final touches here for decorations, putting down some more planters in here uh, to cover up those walls a little bit more. Having some more trees in here. First of all, those fern trees which I do really love and I uh, use quite often. And then some taller palm trees to cover up those naked walls a little bit and make the whole house look a little bit more tropic. Yeah, just like that. And the last thing that we have to do is something that I told you guys in last week's episode that we're going to need a little bit more support for the glass roof so that it would make, uh, that it would make actual more sense. So that is this what I'm going to do right here with those small concrete pieces uh, which I'm trying to create some kind of a bow with just like that copying it around yeah, just make it a little bit more realistic copy it around just like that symmetry very important and have it on the other side as well and finished and it makes a huge difference if you look at it at the inside I really do like how the whole thing looks right now and I hope you guys are as happy with the whole building as I am so let's take a final tour through the house uh, let's have a look at our saltwater crocodile habitat and in the next episode we are going to do a little bit on the outside of our building make it look a little bit nicer and going to finish it before we move forward and build the nocturnal house I hope you guys did enjoy today's video if you did so leave a like leave a comment Subscribe to my channel so you don't miss out on the nocturnal house and all of the other stuff that is going on on my channel and Hope to see you guys next week again Latest when we are going to finish our reptile house put it in the workshop and opening it to the public Okay, guys. See you then. Bye